Hello, this is Andy Schaefers with Acuity. Today we are previewing some beta code for the new robot machining module in NX. I'm excited about this module because of the way it plugs into the back of NX Cam. This allows you to use skills that you already have for programming in NX and your knowledge of our simulation machines to quickly get up to speed with robot machining at the same time. The developers have come up with some really brilliant ways for programmers to control some of the challenging aspects of robot machining, and challenges that we don't normally face on the, the milling machine side of things. Before we get into the actual machining, let's take a quick tour of the architecture. So I'm going to leave the Operation Navigator here, go to the Machine Tool Navigator, and I'll expand this. And we'll look at some of the differences then between uh, the way our robots are set up and our machine tools. So typically with a, a five-axis machine tool, then you'd have three linear axes and two rotary. Of course, with a robot, they're all rotary axes. Also, the positioner that you see down here is also part of the simulation machine. And what's not showing right now, it'll show up in a few minutes when we simulate, is the device or the actual spindle that's going to do the machining for us. Let's preview the motion and just quickly understand the kinematics of our robot. Again, the, our video today is oriented more for people who are familiar with an XCAM but may not be very familiar with robots. So as we go through our axes, these are all rotary axes. J1 is the, uh, the slewing axis here. Uh, J2, the next horizontal axis up. Here's J3, uh, J4, and J5, and you might have noticed that that was blue for a second there, and that's because it was uh, telling us that there was a potential singularity. And, and what's a singularity on a robot? Well, that's when you have two rotary axes aligning, and so this rotary axis here was aligning with this one. Uh, that reduces our uh, ability to reach things and, and creates a situation where we might need a, an infinite rotary acceleration to reach a point. So we, we try to avoid those singularities whenever we can. So blue is the singularity and red means we're, we're out of travel. So here's our J6 and then our, our positioner, I'll show you this right now, it's uh, just rotating here. Um, the part's not rotating with it right now because we uh, don't have this, the, the actual simulation running. Now from your knowledge of five-axis machining, you know that on some machines with uh, like rotary tables, you, you can have multiple solutions, well usually just two. There can be two ways to orient your rotary axis to achieve a given position. With all these rotary axes on the robot, we can end up with much more complex con configurations that we can use. And so those are, are listed here by the rotary axis, and then the OH stands for overhead kind of meaning that uh, often you can get to a position either reaching from the top or swinging the, the arm around and getting to it from underneath. In this case, well, here's the configuration we're going to use. And you don't necessarily have to have this set correctly. The solver in NX is going to look for a configuration that works. So this is more of a preference than an, than an actual setting at this, uh, the way we've got things set up right now. Okay, uh, we've got some tool trays out here, but we're not really using them. Our, uh, our tool is just going to appear here at the end of our spindle when we get started. So let's go back to the Operation Navigator, and for our first few operations, we're going to look at uh, techniques where we really don't require any additional robot-type programming. We're, this is going to look very much like just uh, the programming you would do for a 5-axis milling machine. We'll begin with the top inner edge operation. Before we simulate it, let's look a little bit at how this was created. It's a pretty straightforward variable contour operation. However, um, although I've selected curve edge, there are some new options we came out with back in, uh, in I think version 9.3. The drive settings here now allow you to offset left, and we're making uh, taking advantage of that here with a we're actually offsetting right because of the uh, negative number here. So we're selecting this edge, offsetting slightly to the right, and that's where 
uh, the center of our ball is going to want to be it will then project down onto the edge because we're deburring we have a zero stock offset let's go look at that real quick so we are trying to put the tool right on that edge if I look at verify real quick you'll see what I mean here we are just slightly off to the right side of that of the part and you can really see it here in the, the center line of the tool path okay then what does that mean as we get to the simulation? Let's go through that real quick. Before I begin, I'll go to the simulation settings and show you how things are set up for our defaults. I've got collision detection turned on and I have two pairs. I've got uh, a parent component parent from J4 on down. So remember when you pick the parent, it starts at the upper level and uh, selects any components that exist in the kinematic tree below that. I know it's a little hard to see with the the two colors so close to orange, but I'm uh, taking everything from here on down and checking that against the part and also devices against the part. Also, there's a collision clearance in both cases of five millimeters. So that means that if I get within five millimeters, everything's going to turn a, a purple color. And if I actually have a collision, uh, they'll turn red. Next, let's uh, turn off the toolpath and show our tool trace. As we hit the first button here, we go to the first point of our motion and we see finally our, our spindle device turned on. Okay, let's slow down just a little bit and hit the play button. And you can see it's just uh, as we would expect, the uh, same thing we'd see on a five axis milling machine. We're just getting a, a nice uh, little deburr path here. Okay, let's look at something a little more complex now. In this next operation, we'll find that we're probably going to need to add some additional control that uh, we will need to turn on our rotary axis here at the bottom to correctly position our part and allow for smoother motion of our robot. But let's look at it first without the, the rotary positioner involved. I'll just right click and simulate. Our tool axis here is tilting towards the inside. We are using a, a through point. So I think you see the point here. It's then projecting the tool axis out to the edge. Let's go ahead and simulate and we see right away we've got a pretty aggressive tilt angle going there and let's just run it and see if we have any issues that we need to resolve using the additional controls okay so uh, right away J5 is now in singularity it shows that in kind of a, a darker orange color but let's continue and the the robot's starting to fold over on itself so I think we're gonna have a problem there uh, now we're uh, we've just exceeded limits however um, you know as, as we go back up a little bit let's actually jump forward Any of these areas right through here look pretty good for orientation. So if we could somehow run our positioner so that we could keep the tool in this general area, I, I think we'd be fine. So let's look at how we can add an additional control using a UDE and do that now. I'm going to right click and add a start event. And here's our robot controls. One of them is the positioner. In this case, I don't want a constant joint value. I want a constant surface normal. I need to assign that vector. I'll use by two points. Remember, we kind of we like this setting through here, so I'm just setting up a general vector. Next, I'll apply the rules so that the uh, the robot solver sees those. And now let's simulate that uh, operation one more time. Okay, 
very different response this time. We see the tool is over in this area that we liked. And uh, <laughs> the robot's not doing anything very exciting, uh, but this is a nice smooth motion using the positioner and avoiding both the singularity and the problems with the, uh, the axis control. For a third operation, we'll look at some of these features around the outside of the part down here at the, the lower part of the periphery. It's a outer feature type 4. We will simulate without any additional controls and see how that works for us. That looks good there. Just deburring the edge of those flanges. But now I see we're starting to stretch out here. And as we get to the third one, uh, we are out of travel. Uh, the robot cannot go any further. And uh, it's actually crashed into the part. So that's a different set of problems we've got to solve. But we can actually solve them the same way. I'll grab the positioner object. And here we just want to grab a vector, but we'll reverse it. And now we simulate. Okay, the beginning looks about the same as it did before, but this time the uh, positioner is actually rotating then. As we get to a new surface normal. And that's going to allow us to reach all the flanges and deburr them without running out of travel or without a possibility of the robot crashing into the part. Finally, let's look at some features that are on the inside of the part. Uh, specifically, I might want to deburr these two flanges right here. Now, if you think about the size of that spindle and the size of the, the knuckles of the robot, you realize that's going to be quite a challenge to, to fit those objects down in there without a collision. And it might not necessarily be recommended, but let's just give it a try. It certainly will show us some of the features and capabilities of the software here. So the, the first thing I know is that I'm going to have to change my tool axis. Uh, right now I've got the tool coming straight into the part. And uh, if, if I'm going to have any hope of this fitting, I'm going to have to switch my tool way over here. Uh, so have it coming off to the left and have it pointing out. So I'm going to switch to a, a tool axis of uh, toward point. And let's define that point as maybe uh, 300 in X and minus 350 in Z. So that gets me way over to this corner we were talking about. Next, uh, I noticed that my traverse moves were coming out into the middle. And I'm afraid that's just going to push the, the robot knuckles right into the back side of the part. So let's go into the non-cutting moves. And here in uh, Transfer and Rapid, let's change the size of that common clearance cylinder, maybe to 360 millimeters. Let's do a, a highlight on that. And it'll still clear, but just, just barely, uh, keeping in nice and tight to the part. So let's generate. Click OK and simulate that then. There's our spindle uh, with our approach move. So so far so good. It you know it is very tight on that side though. see it's it's close here uh, which should worry us a little bit because the next flange is even deeper down into the part uh, 
Okay, there's the uh, the clearance violation. Remember, we had that set at five millimeters, and you can see right there, there's our five millimeters. So let's continue. And it didn't actually collide, but uh, obviously that's that's a pretty close call. So let's make an addition or maybe an improvement. And this time we'll uh, put the positioner in play again, but we'll just give it a constant joint value of 10 degrees, which is going to just rotate our part around a little bit to reposition where that knuckle's popping out and see if we don't get just a little bit more clearance this time. Okay, verify the same program again. through it completely without uh, a clearance violation over here. I, I do think that's a little tighter than you usually want to run your equipment, but I think it does indicate uh, we've got some strong capabilities for positioning robots when you're doing deburr operations like this. Uh, the next step with our program would be to post-process and send it out to the machine. Thank you for watching today, and when we do have release software, we're going to create another video showing the complete set of robot functionality we have available to add on to your NX Cam implementation. Thank you.